Hi people, well done. Greetings, it's the 19th of November 2019 and I've just got some things to show you here that I'm going to try to do. I've got a couple of bowls here. Um, narrow footed bowl, this one is was thrown uh, not so long ago. Um, it's now dry. I want to do some kind of decoration on that. And then I have this one, uh, which is not dry, which I've been holding back. So, with the dry one, this one, what I wanted to do was a shellac decoration on the outside using some cheapo brushes. All right. With the one that is not yet, is like leather hard. Well, I have different options of tools here. Um, I was just, I was just looking in my toolbox. <laughs> this, oh, there it is. That is a fluting tool. What I use as a fluting tool, which is a. Uh, broken hacksaw blade okay but you can use many things to decorate for example you can use a potato peeler now if you use a potato peeler you can get different effects this is a little just to show you this is a little lidded a lidded pot but if you if you look at the if you look at the lid of that you'll notice it's kind of faceted you see well, that's done with that red-handled potato peeler. Um, you get a, a sort of scalloped effect like that. You have to hit it at the right time when it's um, the right kind of hardness. All right, so that's that I could do on that, although it's a little bit fine down at the bottom here, uh, the along the lip here. I don't know if it really would be a good idea to use that tool for that. So then we've got this is a homemade tool from a bit of strapping with a piece of heat shrink rubber just put on top. Uh, that does have a little angle a little angle ground there on the on the front edge of the tool. This is a same same idea, same material. It's kind of flip bendy. This was a, a chatter tool used to chatter because it, it vibrates backwards and forwards. We do have also a lemon zesting tool which we could use. My fluting tool which has a, a, a rounded end there as well as a flat end there. And then we have this tool which was I was given recently. It's a di I think it's diamond core. So those are different. Yeah, just a few things I just sort of, as it were, picked out of my toolbox. Um, well, that is a tool I recently. Actually, this is a piece of bamboo, and if you see, I've chiseled the end off there to so I could use it, you know, decoratively in some way. Um, dee, 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 dee. What else have we got? Ah, da, da, da. Sometimes I forget what I've got down in here. Bits and pieces. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's just set the tripod up here. Maybe we'll do some shellacking. Let's whiz the tripod down a bit. Something like that. Okay. I'll sit here. We'll do this first, see how much time we have. 
Bum, 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 bum. Oh yeah, I didn't show you that. I did. Oh, I have showed you this. That's that little beer bottle tool for running. You know, I actually usually use this when the pot is running around on the wheel. I just hold it to it, and it leaves a pattern. Right. So. Yeah, it's the, the trouble with shellac is it does it does tend to ruin brushes, and to be honest, it's not worth the hassle of cleaning them. So it's better just to throw them away. I think. Okay, let's. thing about shellac is it's, I think it's alcohol based or something like that. This is old, older than, it's got quite a sort of smell to it, it smells like a good wine. So, let's have a look, let's get a banding view. Always good to work off the band. Maybe in the picture. Something like that. Aye. Right. Yeah. Let us. So you can have a go at doing this and you'll be pleasantly surprised how fun it is. How much fun. Um, yeah. You can't be too sort of detailed with this, this shellac really. Be careful you don't let it, you don't want it to. I'm not sure if I'm liking the profile of the brush. It's rather kind of... I don't know if I'm gonna like that. Man, these are the cheapest of the cheapos. I was hoping it would come together at the end in a little bit more of a... Hang on a minute, let me just... Uh, let's go over here a second. I'm not sure if I've got some better brushes up here. Or... I mean, I don't want a good brush for doing this, really. I just want to... Oh, that's a better one. Yeah, that's kind of finer. That is much finer. Those other ones are a little bit... I don't really want a brush that's too good. I think that one there... One of those two will do. So the thing to bear in mind when doing the sh shellacking is um, just adjust the light there a bit. What was I going to say? Uh, yeah, you can't get too fine a detail. I don't really want too fine a detail. I want it to be a little bit, eh, you know. Ooh, be careful it, it runs it can run so don't want it to run Try and get a sort of Whoa. 
You're going to have to stand up rather than sit down. As always with brushwork, we want to be kind of a little bit free, not too tight. I'm trying to vary the thickness of the, of the brush strokes a little bit. Dee, 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 dee. Yeah, we want dancing brush strokes, don't we? Dancing. Do -do -do -do. Pew, pew, pew. Looks a bit heavy there, doesn't it? Yeah, it'll be alright. It'll be fine. Hope we're in a picture. It's fine when you come to do decoration or pots. There's so many choices of things to do, aren't there? I like this because it's kind of forgiving. It may look a bit of a mess at the minute. But... Sort of like flames, aren't they? Dee, 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 dee. It dries rather quickly on the brush. It's sort of it's fairly quick drying stuff. This. Which is good in a way because it means you kind of got to work work a little fast, you know. So having done that, I'm going to just come along with my brush, and I'm just going to put some some little dots randomly. Positioned. Here and there. Oh, it looks a bit of a mess, Simon. It, I know, I know what you mean. So when you've done this, what you need to do is let it let it thoroughly dry off, okay? I think we're going to call it a day there. So put him down. Next. So these brushes now, probably going to have to throw them away. Unless I find something else to use that shellac on. Um, 
take this guy. I feel like doing something different with this. Something different. I might even use that. Are we in the picture? Are we in the picture? I've got a, a light here that is. Hope that is. I don't really know. This is the thing is, you see, I don't, I mean, there's things I could do that I know that I've done in the past. I don't know what, I just don't feel like doing the same thing. I could flute this very easily with my fluting tool. But I'm just getting a feeling like I want to do something. I want to do something just different. I don't know. And I don't usually do it like this, upside down. Usually when I flute, I do it from the top here down like that. But I don't know, I'm just getting the feeling like I want to put it... I think partly because I'm thinking it's a little thicker down here than I... when I when I threw it and trimmed it than I maybe wanted it to be. So it feels a little like it's got extra meat down the bottom here. So I'm thinking like I want to... I feel like I want to lighten it a little bit. So then I'm thinking, okay, so how shall I do that? Well, that's where the weight is, so perhaps that's where I should... where I should carve it, you see from here. La, 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 la. Do, 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 do. We, we all go we all go through this don't we you sort of and then you suddenly get you think yes I know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna do such and such. I keep coming back to this tool don't I? Let's see if we can um, See that didn't cut very well. You've got to be very decisive sometimes when you come to Ooh, to decorating and carving and engraving you just gotta this is about the right hardness to do this you see how you need you need a, a banding wheel don't you oh. So I sort of started, as you can see there, around the base. Now as I'm getting up, up closer to the, it's getting thinner and thinner and thinner. It may not, it may not allow me to um, continue doing that. I'm pretty sure it isn't. Do, do, do. So how am I going to continue that? what I started there. Well, you should have thought about that earlier. <laughs> well, yeah, you're right. In a way, I should have done. But you know what? I think I'm going to carry on anyway. I might, it might crumple in the side of the bowl. It might. Ah, caught the end of the tool on it. Oh, darn it. See what I did? I didn't have it properly 
on the banding where it was a little bit over the edge and it's cracked it right there, you see? It's cracked it right on that edge. Partly because the banding wheel's a little small. But we, we will... I had a feeling that something like that might happen. Oh, you see now, now, uh, now the crack is opening up. Okay, well. Oh, another crack. All right, so that was pretty much as I anticipated, though I thought that that probably might happen. As we got down here, it might crack, and sure enough, it did. Once it starts to crack, of course, it's just going to open up because of the, the, the pressure that I am applying here. But the important thing is for you to see it doesn't matter about the bowl um, because we can quickly replace Oop. now I'm really breaking it apart I was wanting to show you have a go yeah have a go at using the potato peeler you want to get it so that when you when you when you cut you see the sort of sheen the sheen it's got there but the tool, if it leaves a nice sheen like that, then that's that's the right that's the right moment to do it. You see. All right, so this one was a, a failure. Um, it's okay. I'm actually what I want to do is I think I'm going to cut it in half. just to see the cross-section of it because I don't think I trimmed it very well and I'd just be curious just to see the cross-section of the bowl yeah so here it is so yeah where I perceived it to be a little thick right on that on that kind of on that corner bit there in fact it what it was you can see the you can see the thickness there a little bit too thick there which made it gave it a heavy kind of feel but you can see the cross section of the foot there through the base All right, that is that. Now, the shellac. It's still a little bit tacky. Uh, what we do with this now is we take a, some water and a sponge. Just take a, a sponge, something like this. Let's see, where did I start that? I started it there. So this should be theoretically the driest part here. Oop, that's still a bit sticky. Yeah. I'm just gonna do a little bit to show you. I'm not gonna be able to do it all over because um, it's not properly dry. So basically what you want to do is wipe it like this once it's dried you see. Just wipe it over. Make sure that your pot is bone dry. Okay, wiping it and wiping it and wiping it. Mm. 
We need to rinse it out a little bit once in a while. I don't know if you can see but you're beginning to wipe away the clay so where the shellac is it, it, it stays raised raised or it appears raised it sort of appears like it's embossed Now this works, I've never done it actually, but never done it on porcelain, but if there are any porcelain throwers out there, I would if I was doing more porcelain than what I currently am, I would I'd be I'd be doing this on porcelain as a as a surface treatment. See, because the clay, you must do this on bone dry, it's because the clay is bone dry, as I, and I put the sponge on it, 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 um, it just wants to wash that, cl that, that clay out very easily and quickly. See how it is washing off on the sponge. The nice thing, of course, it it remains in place. Now, some people say, "Oh, Simon, well, we could do that with wax, couldn't we?" Well, not really. You would not get the same effect with wax because wax does not resist the water and the wiping like I am doing as much as shellac does because shellac dries hard whereas wax is always soft even when it's in its solid state it's still soft so when you wipe it like this where the edges of the of the decoration it's going to get feathered away washed away lose its definition but with the shellac it doesn't because it's much harder when it dries and it leaves a hard, crisp edge. So, yeah. Uh, oh, sugar. I just heard it crack. Did you hear that? Darn it. <laughs> I, was, I was just doing it. I did, felt a little crack. I heard it. I felt a little vibration, a little crack. Sorry folks, not very not very successful today, am I? Yeah, you, that's something to be careful about, of course. Now, if you're bisque firing, I don't bisque fire anymore. If you're bisque firing, you would bisque this in the normal way and and of course the shellac just burns off in the bisque. So when it comes out in the bisque, it's, you don't see the shellac. All you see is the decoration. Um, the finer and the thinner the pot you're doing, the more you have to be careful that you don't do what I just did. I I impinged it a little bit with my hand there, you see, on the edge, and you always want to hold it back like that. And I had my and it, that just applied just a little too much pressure there. Alright, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you one. It's complete 